All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Maria Caras, who is in London or just outside London, actually near the coast. How are you doing, Maria? I'm very well, John. It's been a beautiful day today, so I'm particularly happy today. Oh, good, good, good. Well, timing is everything, so uh, I'm glad we caught you on this day. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, Maria you know, helps individuals launch their own uh, independent uh, businesses as virtual assistants, and she also helps businesses find the perfect virtual assistant. So um, let's get straight into it. We're going to talk today about you know, how to hire a virtual assistant. But before we even start into that, um, maybe, uh, Maria, you could sort of explain what a virtual assistant is for those who either don't know or who maybe think they know but have never really looked into it. Yeah, you'd be surprised how many people don't actually know what a virtual assistant is or that they mm -hmm. that they exist even. But virtual assistants are people that you would bring into your business as contractors uh, not necessarily full-time employees, but contractors who will help you with the day-to-day -day running of your business, which might include some admin, uh, bookkeeping, some marketing tasks, things like that. And they usually work their, um, they'll work their own hours. Um, they'll be remote, so they can be based anywhere in the world. A lot of clients don't actually ever meet their virtual assistants face-to-face. -face. Um, a lot of times they might not even have uh, virtual meetings. I know I've been a client I've been a virtual assistant to some clients. I never actually ever got on a Zoom call with them. So, so it is someone that you will bring into your business to help scale it uh, by taking on the day-to-day -day tasks that a business owner would love to take off their plate so that they can have more time to actually focus on growing their business. Yeah, and, and I guess I guess part of the, and this is probably why you've been able to build a successful business around it is that obviously this is this is very appealing to to people who want to be virtual assistants because it's you know location independent and all of that and you you can probably work your hours and you can be you know located pretty much anywhere, um, and from a company point of view obviously this is great because you have a variable a variable resource and all of that um but i guess what i guess a lot of people would then say okay sounds like a great idea but you know i don't really know what i'm getting or who i'm getting and i don't want to have to go through a lot of different one i don't want to be replacing a virtual assistant every five minutes mm -hmm. i mean that's a valid concern um mm -hmm. there are a lot of virtual assistants out there who definitely see it as kind of make a way to make a quick buck or an easy buck and they don't really ever um, feel invested in the company or invested in the business because especially those who aren't on a retainer and it's kind of like more of a gig type situation um, you won't really necessarily get someone who's really bringing their all to the business so really what you mm -hmm. want to look for is someone who you can bring into your company and kind of have them on a retainer basis. So whether you buy a package of hours or maybe you have a certain set of deliverables that you want um, from them, it, it's good to bring someone in who's kind of going to be there for the long term. And and I forgot what your question was, but <laughs> well, no, the other thing <laughs> so I'll yeah, do. Yeah, no, that's that was perfect. Um, the other thing yeah. I'm going to ask you is okay. So you obviously. Um, you know, train and and mentor and set up virtual assistants. So talk me through what you train them in, what skills they have, because I think that will, and um, what skills you want them to have, because I think that will also help people who are considering virtual assistants who may not realize that there are people like you out there who are actually training and making sure that they're high qualified people. Yeah, absolutely. So we, the kind of thing that we focus on with the virtual assistants that we bring into my inner circle, I call it my, my network of inner circle virtual assistants, is we help them um, amplify the skills that they already have. So a lot of these people will have already come from corporate um, jobs, they will have come from different backgrounds where they already have skills that are very much in demand. So it could be things like, um, you know, data entry, it could be research, it could be social media marketing, it could be invoicing, bookkeeping, you know, payroll, things like that they've, they've done in their former jobs. And I really help them identify what skills that they have and how they can kind of package that to present it as a um, attractive option to a business owner. So we are constantly training our virtual assistants with all the new 
especially within the online business world, things kind of move very quickly. And especially where marketing is concerned and kind of systems and tools, we're constantly keeping our finger on the pulse on what um, clients are asking for, because we have clients coming to us, dozens coming to us every month asking for different things. So we're constantly keeping track, you know, what is, what are people focusing on this month or next month or this quarter? What is the most requested uh, skill that we're, we're seeing being asked for? And we make sure that when we see those trends happening, we'll bring somebody in, we'll do some very specific training on that skill so that our virtual assistants are always, um, are always tooled. They have kind of the tools within their reach to train up on that skill and then be able to offer it to clients that come to us looking for a VA. So we're constantly um, developing their skills together. And then uh, when you are working with companies who are looking for virtual assistants, how do you set expectations and what do you when you work with a company how do you make sure that this is going to be set up for success because uh here, here's a here's a just a human nature thing often mm -hmm. when you they hire somebody internally they will overlook a lot of things that happen when they hire somebody externally like a contractor sometimes human natures they tend to blame the contractor for everything even if they even if it's their own fault because they haven't set it up properly so how do you set it up as a win-win yeah, that is such a good question. Um, the, the, the big thing that we do is that we, um, when, when clients come to us looking for a VA, we ask them 20 plus questions. Like, mm -hmm. what exactly are you looking for? We are really, really thorough from your budget to your location requirements, previous experience, things like personality traits. What, what personality traits are you looking in, for in your virtual assistant? Because a lot of the times, like in corporate as well, when you're working in a team or you're bringing somebody in, a lot of the clashes happen either with your personality or maybe a clash in culture, a clash in values. So we're kind of always trying to get to that kind of like dig into what our clients are actually valuing, what they're, what they're expecting in terms of work ethic. We really, really want to get inside their mind and see what they're looking for. So when we present these opportunities to our VAs, they have a, a very good understanding of what is being asked of them. And similarly, when our VAs apply to these jobs, we are extracting that information from them as well so that they're also properly displaying what their values are, you know, what experience they have, all of those things so that when they finally do get to meet the client and the VA for their discovery call, they're already, they already know so much about each other that it kind of feels like they've, they already know each other through the video call. And really, the video call is a chemistry test at the end of the day mm. and kind of yeah. getting a little bit more information yeah, that, about their tasks and their skills. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that makes that, that makes total sense. And then uh, can you uh, can you give me a couple of success stories so people understand how this works? You don't have to mention companies or anything, but just uh, in the abstract, some of the ones where you've seen uh, great success stories and maybe even ways that might surprise people success stories, hiring a virtual assistant. So um, we've had virtual assistants kind of come into, so we had an online course creators. Um, he's mm -hmm. a photographer and he creates courses online. Uh, he makes six figures every month with his courses. He's got 50 plus courses on this online platform. So we had a virtual assistant come in and what they would do is they would um, take the video content. It was all video content upload it to the online learning platform. They would write kind of the show notes in a way or the timestamps. Mm -hmm. um, they would write up their newsletters as well. So the client would kind of do a little draft of the newsletter. The VA would flesh it out, put it in the email marketing system, schedule it, and it's ready to go. The VA would handle their customer service emails. They would get dozens of customer service emails a day. And they would answer questions like, you know, how do I access this course? Can I get a refund? Mm -hmm. All things like that. So really, they were saving their client hours and hours a week. Um, I think they had them on a retainer 10 hours a week. So really, they were, right. the client was gaining 10 hours of their time back. Mm -hmm. and that's so I get priceless. no that, that's that's a great example and yeah obviously that's priceless and I guess then sometimes when you work with companies uh, who maybe are considering uh, considering hiring a virtual assistant one of the other things as I said earlier about setting expectations sometimes we we want an assistant 
but then when we get in a system, we don't want to give them anything or we give them things and then we go, well, that's not really how I would do it. So I'm going to take that back. And, and so how do you how do you help prepare the people if you're going to take on a virtual assistant? Then, number one, you've got to organize yourself a little so they can be successful. And also, you got to ask yourself, are, are you really ready to let go of things? I know it is such a learning process. It, it is a, a growth pain, isn't it? A letting go. It is so hard mm -hmm. to let go because you think no one can do it as good as you, right? And you might as well save the money and do it yourself. Yep. Um, it, 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 is a pro it is a process and it takes a lot of, especially those businesses who haven't hired a virtual assistant before. It, it, it definitely takes a little bit of coaching. Um, and we always tell our clients, you know, start small, Start with one thing that you takes up some that, you know, you do every day or every week, mm -hmm. start with, start small and just hand that over. And we always advise, you know, don't commit to a VA straight away, do a trial period for a month, you know, um, and just hand off that one thing, then hand off another thing, you know, start slow. And if you can to get super ready to bring on a virtual assistant, try to have some SOPs in place. So standard operating procedures. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that will be the gift that we'll keep on giving in your business. If you can start mapping out your processes for every little thing, little, little thing that you do, it'll be so much easier to bring someone into your business. So you can just hand it off and all they have to do is follow those steps. And, and you kind of have that little bit of control as well, because they're following the steps that you have very specifically laid out for them. So that's kind of one way of, of easing into mm -hmm. it. And one thing I want to say about managing expectations is mm -hmm. what we've seen a lot with um, clients bringing on VAs is that they're bringing on a VA, but really what they need is a Facebook ads specialist, or they need mm -hmm. a coach even, or they need a, a, a proper website designer. When you're hiring a virtual assistant, you're not hiring you know, a premium specialist service. You are hiring someone to assist you. They are there to mm -hmm. execute. They are not there to be your strategist. So, and a lot of people get frustrated with that and they kind of demand a lot from their virtual assistants when that is not really the agreement. That's not the arrangement. So mm -hmm. that's something that we need to kind of address. It's not something yeah, that they intentionally go into the relationship with, but it kind of becomes that. And that's something to be, to be aware of. Yeah, no, I, I could say I could see that for sure. And then I guess on the virtual assistant side, as, as part of your training, you have to uh, help the virtual assistants learn how to manage the person that they're assisting. Because right? I mean, I always say to pe when people ask me about uh, about management, you know, and the, what's the hardest part of management? And I always say, or when the, one of the most critical parts, I would say, if you can learn to manage upwards, managing downwards actually is quite easy, but managing upwards is the harder part. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you help prepare your virtual assistants for being able to manage the person that they are assisting? Yeah, there's a lot of educating that needs to happen from our virtual assistant side. Um, first of all, it's, it's sort of setting boundaries and respecting those boundaries um, and training your clients to communicate in a way that is efficient and kind of streamlined. So um, a lot of the clients might not necessarily use project management software, for instance. So a VA will come in and kind of help you maybe set up your project management management software like Asana yeah. or Trello or ClickUp. And then it's it's important for the the um, VA to kind of stick to using that tool and make sure that their client is using that tool um and respecting those boundaries and sticking to that form of communication because it's it's very often that clients will resort to other means of communicating whether it's by text or email and you just have to stick to those boundaries and yeah it's very hard and i think it, it really will depend and differ on the on the client itself but it's it's definitely something mm -hmm. that needs to be that needs to and happen I and I guess that's where, uh, as you said about the chemistry, I mean, that part is critical, right? The, the connection, mm -hmm. because obviously, if you don't get that right, then it's going to be very hard for the virtual assistant to help educate or push back at all. Because at the end of the day, a good assistant is not somebody who just does everything you tell them to do. It's a good assistant exactly. is somebody who actually you know, brings their own ideas, helps you be more efficient. And, 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 and as we said, like educates you as well. 
Exactly. That's absolutely right. And, and hiring a virtual assistant is just as much as the personality fit as it is about their skills or experience, because uh, you can train anyone to do anything, right? As mm -hmm. long as that person has the right personality to, to, to be coached, to be trained. Yes. So you need to, to work with someone who is open and willing to learn new things. So that personality part is such a huge piece to it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just just tell me how how rapidly is this uh, is this segment growing the virtual assistant segment? Gosh, it's it's especially now during COVID times where so mm -hmm. many businesses are are going online from brick and mortar to kind of going online. It is growing rapidly, and I did read a statistic somewhere, and I can't remember what it was, but it's something like. Um, Six, 60 million businesses or it could be even like a, a billion businesses or something are hiring virtual assistants in 2020. So it, it, it is rapidly growing. And as we move more and more into this remote world, it's becoming more and more of an accepted thing. It's not so scary anymore to work with someone who's halfway across the world and you don't know who they are or what they're getting up to. It's kind of yeah. becoming a very normal thing. Um, so it's definitely yeah. on the rise. The opportunities are endless and and amazing for virtual assistants right now yeah and it's and what i love about it is again it's how it's allowing people to live where they want to live and and sort of build their like decide what's your lifestyle where you know what kind of cost of living area you want to live in all of those things like so it's it's really presenting great opportunities to people and i would just say from personal experience not that i use a virtual assistant but i do use a a, a number of um contractors long-term contractors who as you said i've i've never met them i've never even seen them face to face or whatever but i have a fantastic built up a fantastic relationship over time because they deliver yeah absolutely and that's 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 something that's all you need right mm -hmm. as long as they're trustworthy and dependable and they deliver it doesn't matter what hours of the day they're working or where they're working yeah. from it's you're getting the job done and you're able to focus on what you enjoy doing in your zone of genius yeah. so. and what what i also like is the other thing and i'm and, and this would be true of virtual assistant as well is that yeah you sometimes what, what often happens in a company and i think this is true of a lot of companies is that they hire somebody with a bunch of general skills because mm -hmm. there's not enough work for the specific skill, right? So maybe they hire them as an assistant, the next minute they're kind of half in doing HR work, they're doing a bunch of other stuff that's unrelated. Uh, and so when you start to do that, you become, let's face it, I mean, you end up being good at one thing and mediocre at a bunch of other things. Yeah. But, but by using something like this, you can have somebody who's got the specific skills you need, and then you only use them for the amount of time and work you have for them. Exactly. That's exactly right. Like the commitment is is not scary as it would be for like a full time employee. You mm -hmm. hire someone who is the exact skill set that you need for a very very specific job, and that is so cost efficient, isn't it? And it's time efficient. Mm -hmm. So there, it's a very attractive option. Yeah, actually, this has been uh, this has been great. Uh, this has been fantastic, Maria. Um, all of Maria's information is going to be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, I coach and uh, train virtual assistants. So um, I mostly work with women who want to either stay home with their families, or maybe they don't want to go to corporate life, go back to the corporate world. Um, and I train them up to use the skills that they already have to package them and offer them as virtual assistant services. And what we then do is match them with business owners who are looking for VAs to scale their businesses and help them find their right fit virtual assistant. So. We have our membership, which is called the Inner Circle, and you can learn all about that at my website, which is mariacaris.com. Yeah, and as I said, all of Maria's information will be below this video, and I would encourage you to check it out uh, because as we have been discussing, there's an explosion of hiring virtual and variable resources online. But the only downside of that is you don't really know much about their qualifications. And especially for a virtual assistant, kind of anybody can set themselves up as a virtual assistant. So I would encourage you to check out Maria's website. And if you're looking for a virtual assistant, go find somebody who's actually been trained and, and has uh, is committed to the particular job, as opposed to what we said at the beginning, just, you know, jumping online and, uh, and pitching yeah. yourself, even when you don't have the background or the skills. And just to say as well, the VA matchmaking service that we offer is completely free. So if you 
have thought about hiring a virtual assistant, you can come to us and kind of even just try it out. There's no commitment to hire anybody. There's no obligation to hire anybody. So you can come and try it out. We can send you a list of, of possible candidates. And if nobody fits the bill, then you don't have to hire them. But then that gives you a really good um, taste and feel of what's out there. What are the rates people paying? What skills are out there? Um, and then when you're ready to hire, you can definitely come back and, and, and have a, a call with one of them. Fantastic. All right, listen, thanks, Maria. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.